This is your one and only FireSpark81 with your daily dose of video goodness and welcome back to another exciting Atlas video. Today we're going to take a look at everything you need to know about the schooner. Let's get to it. All right, so we're going to start off taking a look at the skills and where you get it at. Uh, you're going to need a seamanship and then you're going to scroll all the way down to intermediate. So you're going to have to learn the small shipyard and then you get the intermediate that's going to teach you the schooner medium wood ship deck and the medium wood plank. So you can see just follow down the line here like so. So not too bad to learn it. Then you're going to build your small shipyard. We take a look at the base cost for the skeleton of the hull. You're going to need 332 fiber, 42 metal, 540 thatch, and 390 wood. And we get some other stats to take a look at here. So you're going to need a total of 28 medium planks to cover this. That's the normal planks. You can replace those with gun ports and we'll talk about that here in a minute, but you're going to need a total of 28. You're going to need two medium ship decks. It's a sale number limit is four and you're going to need 32 ceilings to cover the deck completely. So if we come up here and take a look, here is just your normal base schooner. I have the normal planks going down the sides on both sides and I have not filled in with the ceiling. So when I talk about you're going to need the 32 ceilings, that is to fill in all of this completely. However, you're probably going to only need 31 because you're going to want to leave a gap somewhere to put stairs in to get down to the bottom. But these are two decks. There's the deck there and then there is the other deck that you can see it just lines the edge here with a huge gap. Now if we talk about gun ports, let's talk about where you can put those gun ports. I have a second one over here and and as you can see, let's go inside so you get a better look at where you can put those gun ports. So we have them going down the edges here, holding a max of five gun ports. So you cannot put gun ports in the upper planks here. So this section here, and I think, I think that section covers this whole thing. So this should be one whole plank cover here and one whole plank cover here. Same with the back. This should be one whole plank cover here. So it looks like the only ones that can have the gun ports are just the single little slots because like that's one plank, that's one plank, that's one plank. And you have to also cover the bottom of this bad boy as well. However, the bottom cannot hold any of the gun ports. So you have to go down here and place planks all along the base here as well. And you can see that none of those can hold the gun ports if I try to snap them in there. They don't snap to any of the section down at the bottom. That's because the base of this, the deck that you put on the bottom does not allow you to get into the very bottom of your ship like a lot of the other ones do. It actually caps off your ship and doesn't allow you to get below there, but it's so low that you wouldn't actually be able to get down below there anyway. You may actually be able to leave this off. I've never actually tried and just put the top one on and complete your ship and uh, run it that way, but having this allows so much more benefit, I don't know why you would do that. Okay, and with that being said, let's fill in the top section here and let's talk about sales. So I'm just going to fill this in real quick with a bunch of ceilings so that we can snap some sales and talk about how many sails you can put on here, what configuration you can put them on, and all of that good stuff. All right, so as stated, your sail unit count is four, as you can see here. That allows for a lot of different options, but we're gonna talk about what I feel are your best options and what you probably wouldn't wanna do. So as you can see here, we can place pretty much any of these sails on this ship. So this is a small, this is a medium, and then we can even put a large one here. So you could do something like one large and you can't do a medium because a medium is 1.7 and that is going to go over considering this is 2.7, but you could do a small, but from what I can tell, the small doesn't make too much of a difference. And with the current speed increase that we get from even sailing against the wind, it, it doesn't really make sense to waste the space on your ship and the weight just to tack like a small handling sail on there or something like that. In my opinion, you may feel different. And if you do, that's absolutely fine. If you're sailing with a full crew, it may be worth doing something like two of the small speed sails and two of the handling sails 
or if you're making a weight ship, just a bunch of the weight sales, or if you just want that little bit additional weight and you don't really care about using the sale, you could do something like a large sale and then a uh, small weight scale just to increase your weight a little bit. So if we take a look at our weight here, our current weight is at 9,000. If we place a small weight sale on it, you can see that that actually bumps our weight up to an additional 425, which is a pretty decent increase considering that's like no extra points spent in leveling your ship or anything like that. It just gives you that extra 425 weight and you never even need to use this sale. So you have a lot of different options with these sales and how you want to do this. And a lot of it comes down to how you plan on piloting your ship. If you have a crew, it may be worth doing the, you know, two medium sized sales. If you're soloing it up, it's honestly your best option just to do one large large speed sale, you can pretty much outrun anything with that. And that's the design that I'm going to be showing here today is the solo design. Just a quick disclaimer, this whole guide is based on PVE gameplay, not PVP. If you are playing PVP, then more power to you. I am not going to play PVP on an early access game full of bugs and glitches and everything else. If you want to deal with that frustration, then that's great. Have at it. But this is all PVE stuff. I see so many comments in like my previous ship videos and stuff like that where people are like, oh, that's a terrible PVP design. Yeah, that's great. It's not made for PVP. This is all PVE. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to find this first panel right here and then we want the very next panel up the way there. We're going to remove that. So don't put a panel right there. So it should look like that. That's where your stairs are going to go. We're going to go ahead and put those in there. If you do not know, you get the stairs, the straight stairs from the common wood roof. If we do the normal stairs, so if I just type in stairs here and we'll craft up some of those, they won't fit for this design the way that it is. They get stuck so you can see there. And if I swap them around, they don't work. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the straight stairs and they actually work out perfectly. So we'll just hit T until we get stairs and there you go. So you can see that allows us to get to the bottom of the ship without any issues whatsoever. From that, we're going to go ahead and we're going to put up our walls. Now you have a few different options here on how you want to do this. And it's, it basically comes down to, do you want gaps like right here on the sides on the top, or do you want gaps towards the back and how you want it to look? Either way, you're kind of damned if you do, damned if you don't situation, but there's two different designs and it just, it's a matter of how, how you want them to look and which ones you like better. It's pure preference. So uh, for the front though, I like just using the slopes. So we're going to do the slopes here. And if you put a slope, right, come on, snap there, snap for me, right like that, it actually catches you. So you can't put one there. We actually have to go back one more. So we're going to take a step back and we're going to go right here and we're going to then Put this one here and then the center one we're going to swap that down until it says doorway and then we're going to place that in like that so then you have your door and you can just use a normal door it will snap right into there and you'll get the cool door like that now there's a bunch of different ways you can do this with stairs and stuff like that but i like having this full slope here that you can run up no matter where you're running up you can run up to the top it's just the design that i like and the one that i feel is the best if you wanted to you could put some stairs here and square this off but i like this slope design and you'll see uh, when we're all done uh, how it looks and why i like it okay so now your next option is to take the ceilings and you're going to place them across like so and then you can take them all the way back until you get to this section here, you can see we can no longer place them. But if I change those to the triangle pieces, you can then place them like so till you get this situation here. Now you can't really fall down in here. You can like a little bit, but you don't, you don't because you catch. So you can't fall all the way down. I mean, 
You may be able to glitch the game and get it, but I can't do it just from like kind of moving around. You just kind of get stuck there and you can't really fall down. So if we come in here then, then we can place our walls on the inside. We're just gonna go like this and then you don't really need one right there. For those you wanna slope, use the angled ones and then you can just place your walls across the back like that. And then for those there, we're just gonna hit T until we get to the, is that the one we want there? Yeah, I think that's the one we want. So then we're just going to get it there and then we'll hit uh, hit Q until we get it to the right spot. And then we can do the same thing over here. And then you end up with that. And that's your, that's the design there for the main part. You got it all squared off. You got your nice top part here. You can put railing across the top or however you want. Now the other option you have, and we can go ahead and get rid of these. And then we're going to get rid of the second row here as well. And then I'm also going to delete the wall pieces down below here. So with this design, you're going to build one row of the square across like you see here. And you want to go ahead and build the slopes like we've already done and basically get to the point where we're at right here. You can see the design that I just made there. Then once you have that, you're going to go to your ceiling pieces. You're going to transform those so you get to the triangles. And then you're going to place triangles all the way across like so. Now you can't place them here. I know it's stupid and I told you you're going to end up with a gap no matter what you do. Uh, and that's the situation here. And then you're going to place your, continue to place the triangle pieces like so. And then place them all the way across like that. And then you end up with these gaps like you see here. Now the downside to these gaps is you can actually fall into these gaps as you see there. But we're going to build some wall and keep that and some railing and keep that from happening. So then the next thing we want to do is we want to place our wall and you get the wall angles as you see there. So you get a nice little rounded room and then you get this situation here. So you lose a little bit of space there in the corners, but I actually like this design better. But once again, this whole thing that I'm showing you here is completely up to you and it's all personal preference. Neither one is better than the other. Now what we can do is we can go over here, pick our wall, and then we can hit T until we get to railing. And then we can place the railing across like that. And that'll just keep people from falling down the gap there because if you do have crew on here and you got some derps or whatever, or maybe you just derp out like Firespark does all the time and you fall down in between there, you're going to get stuck and you're going to have to disassemble one of your walls in order to get out. So the railing just keeps that from happening. Now, another cool thing about this design, if you are using this, if you do want to make it like a, a warship or something like that, you can actually remove this railing here. And it's one of the reasons I like putting this whole thing up here like this. And you you can put a cannon right here so you don't have to spend the additional money on the gun ports down below because the gun ports are more expensive they cost you more metal and more resources than just putting the planks but you can put the guns up top without much issue and I'll, I'll show you a completed version that's kind of a warship without the gun planks um, but not I mean minimal warship at that but it's going to be made still made for solo design so i'm going to go ahead and delete this because that's going to come into play later we're just going to leave those off your main ones you want are right here just to keep you or your other people from falling down in between there and getting stuck okay so now for the sails we're going to use the speed sail we're going to use a large speed sail now I like to place that just about right here. So just a little bit back from the front, but not, you know, not quite the middle of the ship there. And then once you've placed your large speed sail, you're going to want to grab your steering wheel. So we'll grab that and I like to line it right up with the middle. And you can do that by following uh, that line right there. You can see that line is your middle line. So we'll just follow that line right there, put the red arrow with it the best we can, line it up, and then I just move forward until we smash it up against the sails. Take just a little step back and there you go. Now you can easily man the sails and you can look down and you can also man your steering wheel. So this leaves us a ton of room on the top deck, a ton of room because down below we have a ton of room as well that we can put pretty much anything else we want in. And this is where all of our crafting stations and the bed and all that stuff are going to go. And then uh, up here we can put a little bit of extra storage and stuff. So let's talk about uh, decking 
checking out the rest of the ship, and then we'll talk about converting it over to a warship. All right, so with this design, you should be able to access pretty much all parts of your hull, and I like to keep it that way. So if you see, we can come down here, we can access all of these parts, even the parts you think that they're blocked off up here, they're not really because you can access them from down below. So we can get to all of the different sides of our ship, and we can access all the way around from down below. And I like to keep it like that, so that's the main theme that we're gonna go for here. So the next thing you want to do, you can place your ship's storage. I like to keep this storage up top just so it's easy to get to, easy to drop all the resources off in so we can just place that right there like so. And then if you want ammo box, if you plan to put cannons on it, we can put the ammo box right across it, right underneath here. And it's just, you know, tucked nicely out of the way there. So now we're gonna come down to the bottom here and we have plenty of room to put in everything we need. So the main things you're gonna need are a tannery and a smithy and we're gonna place those right on both sides of the mast. So we're just going to come over this way just a little bit here and the tannery takes just a little bit of finagling but I like to get it right so that we can continue to move around it. So place it down real quick and then do a lap around it. Make sure that it's not hanging you up anywhere. Make sure you can move around it nice and easy. See how good that is? We can move right around it no problem. Then the next thing we're gonna take our smithy and we're gonna put that right on the other side here. Butt it up right against it and now we can continue to test, test that out as well. You can see we can move around that just as easy. Now, if you want to, you can put like a little mortar and pestle right here. So you're probably gonna need one of those. So we can place one of those right here. We're just going to line it up and there you go. So now you have that. So you have everything you need to make pretty much everything you need on board your ship and you're good to go. And we're going to tag a bed right here in the front end of this bad boy and now, if you want more beds, you're gonna have to figure out how to do that. I only have this set up for just one bed. I don't usually level the, what is it, accommodations or whatever it is to put additional beds on the ships. So I find that I, I mean, we only have a one minute cooldown. I find I only ever need one bed. If you want others, you could probably, you know, place them staggered outwards. So if we go here, you could probably place like one right here and then place one right here and still not have any issues moving around because as you can see, we can move right through the bed. So they're not really that big of a problem. Now, the next thing I like to do is place a little bit of additional storage. So we'll just come over here. We'll line it up with the center of the ship like everything else so that we can move around easy. We'll place one and then we'll just back up and then we'll place another one that just gives us a little bit of additional storage there for stuff that won't fit in the resource chest up here. And this allows us just to move around our ship and still he, you know, repair everything nice and easy from down below. And I know what you're thinking, but what if I want to put cannons down there? Can I still use that same design? For the most part, yes. You're not gonna, I mean, you're gonna run into issues if you try to line the whole thing with cannons, but there are parts where you can fit the cannons in here. So if we take a look here, if I move out a little bit here, you can see that the cannon will fit right there and then we can just rotate it right into the gun port and uh, then you man it and you can fit in there and then you unman it. However, that's going to hamper you moving around your ship easily and you may want to come up with a different configuration or put the gun ports here and leave out the tannery will make things a lot easier on you as well. So yeah, it will be a lot more difficult for you to move around with this setup, but you can do it nonetheless. Now, the other option you have is if we come up top here, and I actually like this idea a little bit better. I mean, it does make it easy for your cannons to take damage, but you can put them on top and save all of that space down below, and you don't have to build the gun ports. So if we take a look here, put a cannon there, we can put a cannon there, and then we can come down here and we can put cannons all over the deck. And as you can see, with the cannons on the deck, it doesn't hinder you at all from moving around. We can still move around really easy and we continue to keep all of this stuff down below. So we're essentially a fully mobile base because we have all the crafting stuff that we need, plenty of resource storage. And you can see without any resources with just the stuff that we have on board, I mean, we're only at 1,875 weight.
So we're barely, we're barely scratching the surface of our total weight count there. And I mean, we haven't even put any points in to level up weight or anything like that. And also uh, something you can do with the cannons on top that you can't do with the cannons on the bottom is you can put two on the back. So if you are being chased, you can fire behind you continuously or drop the explosive barrels behind you really easily as well. That's something you can't do because as you see over there, you can only put the gun ports down the side. Now, like I stated, this does leave your cannons open to taking damage, but they have 8,000 hit points so they can take a bit of a beating. And it also allows you to be an easy mobile base with keeping everything uh, crafting station wise secure down below plenty more more space to put stuff because you can put more stuff in the middle here and still have room to move around and have somebody downstairs running repairs and having your repair person downstairs means that they are protected from a majority of the cannon fire and everything else. Also, if your ship gets boarded, you have this shut, which means they have to get through the doors to get downstairs to your person running repairs. It's going to be a little bit more difficult for them to uh, sink things and stuff like that. But once again, uh, the main design of this ship is with none of this extra, you know, warship stuff style in mind. The main design of this ship is to be a speed ship, to be a mobile base for single person for solo design. So with that being said, let's release this bad boy and let's take it out and I'll show you how fast it is. We'll see if we can find uh, a ship to get into a fight with and I can show you how easy you can outrun it. So we're going to drop the sails. We can easily man the sails. Just by hitting E, we can drop down. We don't even have to take our eyes off anything. We can just immediately change the sails to whatever they need to be. So now we can swap them to the back. We can go back to controlling our ship. It's a super easy, super effective design having this just the one large sail. As you can see, this ship is very fast. I'm actually getting some frame lag because of how fast this ship is with this large sail, especially when you're catching the wind. Okay, so we're going to try to get into a fight here. We'll see if we can get this guy to, to pay attention to us. And I will show you how easy it is to actually outrun them. I mean, even without catching the wind, the ship still has the 30% speed because Sailing is extremely broken right now. This may be different in the future. Keep that in mind. There's a lot of people petitioning to remove that 30% increase in move speed. Um, but we're going to see if we can grab a hold of a little bit of wind here. All right, so we got a bunch of ghost ships around here. Let's go ahead and correct our sails. And we're just going to pull around here. We should catch the wind as we're sailing past this guy. Should be in our favor. There we go. We got it now and we are booking it. We are moving very fast. I mean, look how fast this thing moves when it has the wind in its favor. Like it's crazy. I'm going to sail right past this guy before he even realizes what's going on and be out of range before he can even do anything about it. All right. As you can see, we've drawn aggro. We got the, the health bar. He does, does recognize that we are a threat. Now, as we're sailing past, if people were on, they could be manning all those cannons on the back, firing all over him, but we're long gone. He's done. He's already dropped aggro. You can see we don't see the health bar anymore. He doesn't really care. We're, we're booking it. We've completely outrun him. All right, so I think this one here is a bit more of a threat. Let's sail into this one. We're going to lose the win here, but I'm just going to see if I can get its attention, and then I'm going to catch the wind again and attempt to outrun it. Okay, here we go. The health bar just popped up, so it's aggroed to us. And we don't have full wind yet. I'm gonna sail in front of it. I'm gonna kind of go a little slow here. Okay, so he is shooting at us. So let's turn, catch the wind again. He missed us. He's still firing. We're getting a little, we're moving so fast. We're, we're I'm lagging a little bit here. And we're gone, we're long gone. He can't catch us. 
So one large speed sale, definitely speedy, definitely gonna get you to where you need to go. And you really, unless you're playing PVP or you're looking for a fight or you're looking to make a warship, you really don't even need the cannons on here. Uh, you can use this as a mobile base. You can do stuff like level the weight on this thing. And we're gonna talk about that now that we got a few levels here. We're gonna go back to dock and we're gonna talk about leveling it up. And I'm gonna show you how much weight you get per level and all that stuff. One thing I do want to show you is the difference in move speed before we get back here to the dock uh, when you're a heavyweight and when you're not heavyweight. So I'm going to remove creative from myself right now. You can see the weight on the ship jumped up and you can also notice that we took a bit of a, a slower speed there. We, we dropped down in speed. It was noticeable. All right. So let me swap back and I'll show you the difference. So I swap back. Look at how much speed we picked. I wish we had a speedometer so it could actually like show you, but you can see the little bit of difference there. I don't know why I'm getting such frame rate lag, but we're going to get this guy. He's going to notice us. I'm going to get him to chase us. and I'm going to drop out a creative here. And so hopefully you can see the difference. So, all right, let's drop out a creative now. So you can see that he's able to pace us a little bit easier. He's firing at us. And if you're this heavy weight, now we have the weight almost maxed out, so keep that in mind. I'm sorry for the frame rate lag. I'm not sure why that's happening, um, but you can see that uh, we're still able to outrun him, but not nearly as fast as when we have very little weight. I mean, look at that difference. So I just wanted to make you aware of that. Now, I mean, your chances of being that heavyweight are could be slim. I don't know. You may run into that situation if you're using this for a weight ship to, you know, traverse with a lot of resources, but just wanted to make you aware. Also, this is how fast you move catching the wind at 50% sails. So you can see there, we're, we're still, we still got some decent speed and that's at 50% sails actually catching the wind. Okay, so now that we're back here and docked, let's take a look at putting points and stuff and how much you get. So if we put a point in weight, we're going to get 80 weight per point. In sturdiness, we're gonna get 2.5% per point of sturdiness. You only get 0.5 for accommodations and 0.5 for crew. Now keep in mind that 80 weight as opposed to putting on a weight, small weight sale is a big difference in total weight count. But as you can see with this current design here, we are unable to do that because uh, this is getting in our way. So we would almost have to uh, remove all of this now, if we come down here to the front and we put this as far as we can in the front, that's going to leave us a lot more room and then we can move back. We should be able to place it. There you go. So it's going to be in your way just a little bit from the center here from running in the doors, but that's a definite option. And then you can do pretty much everything the exact same design so we can grab our steering wheel and we can still put that right in front of the ship. We're just going to be or in front of the sail. We're just going to be much further to the front when driving this thing, but you get a nice additional weight increase. If you take a look at our weight now, I mean, we still only get 80 per, but that 80 per you get, if you're going to put those points into weight is going to be on top of the 425 you get for just having this small weight sale on here. And you could swap these around if you wanted to as well. So you could do something like this, where you have this more centered in the ship and then you just jam that little weight sale up towards the front because you know it's a little weight sail you're not really using it for anything you don't really need it except for the weight and now you can easily pop off of the steering wheel and then head back into the back of your ship all right so i have just a few more things to cover here before we wrap this up so your planks on the side of your ship are going to have 5100 health each you are going to need wood thatch fibers and metal in order to repair it so keep that in mind because every ship below this where you only needed wood thatch and fiber to repair it you need metal to repair the planks on this ship so you're going to need to make sure you have metal stored on board preferably inside your ship resource box so that you don't have to carry it on your person and you can just run repairs without any issue. If we take a look at our main uh, deck here, it has 40,000 HP. And if you do the large speed sale, you have uh, 15,000 uh, HP on that one. So it's pretty sturdy. 
And I think that pretty much covers everything there is to cover with this ship. If I left anything out or missed anything, or if you have anything to add to it, let me know in the comments. Uh, let me know if you use the large speed sail, how it works out for you. And let me know if you use this as a warship. I personally don't. Once again, I play on PVE. Um, but if you play on PVP, let me know if you use it as a warship and let me know what design you use. I'm sure or there's plenty of other PVP players out there that would be interested in reading that comment. All right, and I think that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this episode. I want to give a big thank you to G Portal for sponsoring this episode and providing me with the uh, server so I can show you all all of this stuff and teach you all about the game. If you would like to get your own Atlas server, check out uh, the link in the description to G Portal. It has a discount attached to it uh, and it helps uh, support the channel. So there's that too. All right, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. If you like what you saw, consider hitting that sub button. I want to give a big thank you to my patrons for making this episode possible. You all are absolutely amazing people. If you would like to join my elite crew of Patreon supporters, please check out the link in the description below. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a comment down below and let me know what you thought. If you're shy, you don't like to comment, just hit that thumbs up button and show your support. Until next time, thanks for watching.